What up, y'all? It's Boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. We're learning some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Prince Harry is feeling over the moon after welcoming his first child with Meghan Markle. The 34-year-old Duke of Sussex spoke to reporters Monday after Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, gave birth to a baby boy. Harry said, according to Sky News, mother and baby are doing incredibly well. It's been the most amazing experience I could ever possibly imagine. He added, how any woman does what they do is beyond comprehension, but we're absolutely thrilled and so grateful for all the love and support from everybody out there. Harry says he and Markle are still thinking about a name for their son. The couple plan to announce the name and introduce their baby to the world in probably two days' time. Harry said it was a, quote, amazing experience to witness the Duchess give birth. He says, as I said, I'm so incredibly proud of my wife. As every father and parent would ever say, your baby is absolutely amazing. This little thing is absolutely to die for, so I'm just over the moon. Harry and Markle had announced their son's birth in a post on their official Instagram account Monday. The palace says, we're pleased to announce that their royal highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, welcome their firstborn child in the early morning of May 6, 2019. The royal highness's son weighs 7 pounds 3 ounces. The palace also added the Duchess and Baby are both healthy and well, and the couple thank members of the public for their shared excitement and support during this very special time in their lives. More details will be shared for forthcoming days. Marco went into labor early Monday morning with Harry by her side. The new baby is Queen Elizabeth II's eighth great-grandchild and seventh in line to the throne. The child shares a birthday with psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, director Orson Welles, actor George Clooney, and former British Prime Minister Tony Blair. Harry and Markle married in May 2018 and announced Markle's pregnancy in October. The royal family said on Twitter at the time, the royal highnesses have appreciated all of the love they have received from people around the world since their wedding in May and are delighted to be able to share this happy news with the public. Harry Markle established a separate court from Harry's brother Prince William and his wife Kate Middleton ahead of their baby boy's birth. The couple moved from Kensington Palace to Frogmore Cottage on the Windsor's ground. The palace says this long-planned move will ensure that permanent support arrangements for the Duke and Duchess's work are in place as they start their family. Harry Markle said in April they plan to keep the royal birth private. The couple applauded fans for their generosity the same month after asking for charitable donations instead of baby gifts. The palace says, not only did many of you lend your support, you took action. You chose to be part of the collective good, and you have made a real difference. Amy Schumer announced Monday she and her husband Chris Fisher welcomed a baby boy overnight. The comedian said she gave birth at 10.55 p.m. Sunday in an Instagram post showing her and Fisher holding the baby in the hospital room. She captioned the picture, making a reference. Our royal baby was born to another birth announcement Monday, that of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Schumer also referenced the royal baby when she announced her pregnancy in October, photoshopping an image of her and Fisher's faces on the bodies of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Schumer had a uh, a difficult pregnancy with a severe case of hyperthermia, or morning sickness. In February, doctors advised her not to fly, and she canceled the remaining dates of her stand-up comedy tour. Schumer and Fisher married in February 2018. They did not announce their child's name. Spoiler alert. Tom Holland's Peter Parker is having a hard time juggling his personal life with this superhero one in the latest trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home. The clip released on Monday features Peter grappling with the death of his mentor, Iron Man, played by Robert Downey Jr., following the events of Avengers Endgame. The young hero, who is feeling pressure to fill in the gaps left behind by Iron Man, goes on a school trip to Europe with his friend Ned, played by Jacob Badlaton, and MJ, played by Zendaya. Peter is then quickly recruited by Nick Fury, played by Samuel L. Jackson, for a new mission that involves taking down a group of elemental creatures. 
Peter meets Quentin Beck, also known as Mysterio, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, on the mission, a man from an alternative universe, Earth, who has superpowers of his own. Mysterio begins to give Peter advice on being a superhero after the high schooler explains how he wants to break uh, from saving the world and wants to tell MJ how he feels about her. Mysterio says, you may not be ready, but this is my responsibility. Saving the world required sacrifice. Sometimes people die. Spider-Man Far From Home from director John Watts is set to arrive in theaters on July 5th. Colby Smulders stars as Nick Fury's partner, Maria Hill. Marissa Tomei stars as Aunt May. And John Favreau stars as Iron Man's friend and bodyguard, Happy Hogan. Aladdin star Will Smith says taking over the role of Genie from the late actor Ron Williams was an intimidating experience. The 50-year-old actor said on one day's episode of Good Morning America, he hopes to pay homage to Williams, who voiced Genie in the 1992 animated Disney film while bringing new flavor to the role in the live-action remake. Um, Smith told host Robin Roberts, Michael Strahan, and George Stephanopoulos, I just watched the original, and Robin, he just destroyed that thing. It was so intimidating. He says, the only thing that I latched onto was the idea that it was going to be live action. I knew that left uh, a little bit of room. He revolutionized what you could do in these types of films. He really changed using modern references and things like that. Smith says he listened to the original soundtrack and used hip-hop to put a fresh spin on the character. He says, I could pay homage to Robin, but then also be able to add my new flavor. This is the most fun I've ever had making a movie. Smith voices pride in the remake and praise director Guy Ritchie. He says, you know, I've made some good movies and I've made some questionable ones. This one, this is such a beautiful, beautiful movie. Guy Ritchie did a great job. There's such an edge to it. I can, in good conscience, encourage you to go see this one. The original land features the voice of Williams, who died at the age of 63 in August 2014, Scott Winger, and Linda Larkin. The live-action remake stars Smith, Mina Masood, and Naomi Scott, and opens in theaters May 24. Land released a new TV spot trailer featuring Aladdin and Jasmine in April. Busy Phillips says E is canceling her talk show Busy Tonight. The 39-year-old actress and television personality announced in an Instagram post Sunday that the series will air its final episode on the network May 16th. Phillips shared a photo of herself posing on a balcony. She wore a long floral pink dress with puffy sleeves. The star captioned the post. It's the perfect dress for both the Ren Fair and to let you know my show, Busy Tonight, won't be returning to the E! Network after May 16th. She says, we have eight more shows on E! And then who knows what the future will bring. Uh, Phillips also addressed the cancellation in a series of videos on Instagram stories saying she plans to shop her show around. The actress confirmed they decided not to pick it up. Look, we're meeting with people and seeing if there's another place that makes sense for it to go. We would all like to figure out a way to continue to make it. She also added, it's kind of wild because we've only been doing the show for a relatively short period of time. In that time, I feel we've been able to accomplish so much creatively and I guess culturally. And I think we have a real point of view. I'm so proud of all the things we've been able to do. And I do feel the show is really successful in that way. But I don't know what to say. Busy Tonight premiered on E! in October. Celebrity guests have included Kim Kardashian, Camila Mendez, Padma Lashmi, Daniel Radcliffe, Mandy Moore, and Nicola costa -Wadu. Phillips is best known for playing Kim Kelly on Freaks and Geeks, Audrey Liddell on Dawson's Creek, and Lori Keller on Cougar Town. Nora O'Donnell and John Dickerson are set to exit CBS This Morning with O'Donnell moving into the CBS Evening News the network announced on Monday. Gail King, who is remaining on CBS This Morning, will be joined by new co-hosts Anthony Mason and Tony Dukopil, starting on May 20th. O'Donnell will be the anchor and managing editor of CBS Evening News, starting this summer, replacing Jeff Gore. The program will move from New York to Washington, D.C. in the fall. She will be the third solo female anchor of an evening newscast following ABC's Diane Sawyer and Katie Couric, who hosted CBS Evening News from 2006 to 2011. Dickerson will, con will be contributing to election specials and is moving to, six, uh, to 60 Minutes. O'Donnell will also be the lead anchor of political events on CBS and will continue as a contributing correspondent on 60 Minutes. O'Donnell said of CBS this morning, I think about the legacy, I think about the history of CBS, and it's incredibly humbling to accept this position. I'm going to give this everything I've got. 
The lineup changes at CBS comes after Susan Zerinsky was named the president of CBS News in January, taking the position in March. Julie Bowen is a fan of country star Blake Shelton after scaring him on the Ellen DeGeneres show. The 49-year-old actress discussed the moment during Monday's episode of the talk show saying Sheldon was so sweet when she pranked him on the series last week. She told host Ellen DeGeneres, Oh, he's so sweet, and I'm now a fan of his. I knew him a little bit before, but now I'm a fan, and I'm scared of him. And I scared him. I feel bad. Bowen waited to scare Sheldon in a box disguised as an end table during the show's May 1st episode. Sheldon kept his arm on the, on the box and pound on it for emphasis several times during the interview. Bowen says, I was terrified. This is Blake Shelton. His hands are the size of a hand. Bowen herself got us scared during Monday's episode when an Ellen producer dressed as Sheldon popped out of the box. She says, I was ready to fight him off like he was a White Walker, referencing to Game of Thrones. I was going to area Stark that man. The Giants presented Shelton with an engagement clock, uh, cock, um, countdown clock during his interview last week. She urged Shelton to propose to singer Gwen Stefani, his girlfriend of over three years. The general says, so Mother's Day is coming up. I have something for you to give her. Shelton responded, so you're going, uh, so you're saying there's a chance she's going to ask me to marry her. Uh, Sheldon responded. Bowen played Claire Dunphy on the ABC series uh, Modern Family. The show's in its 10th season and co-stars Ty Burrell, um, Sofia Vergara, uh, Sarah Hyland, and Ariel Winter. Diana Ross says on Twitter that she felt violated by the Transportation Security Administration at the Louis Armstrong New, York, uh, New Orleans International Airport. Ross, who was in New Orleans for the Jazz and Heritage Festival, posted a number of tweets on Sunday about how she felt mistreated by TSA. The music legend says, okay, so on one hand, I'm treated like royalty in New Orleans, and at the airport, I'm treated like shit. Let me be clear, not the people or Delta, but TSA was over the top. Makes me want to cry. Ross continued, it's not what was done, but how I am feeling violated. I still feel her hands between my legs, front and back, saying it to me, it's her job. Then someone said, wow. Really mixed emotions. I always like to see the good things, but not feeling bad things right now. A spokesperson for TSA told CNN that after reviewing footage of Ross's screening at the airport, that the officers involved followed all protocols. However, TSA will continue to investigate the matter. Ross made headlines in March when she celebrated her 75th birthday with the star-studded bash that was intended by Beyonce and Khloe Kardashian, among others. Adele is 31 and ready to move on from her trying year. The singer shared an optimistic message on her birthday Sunday on Instagram following her split from husband Simon Konecki. Adele captioned a slideshow of black and white photos. This is 31. 30 tried me so hard, but I'm owning it and trying my hardest to lean into it at all. She said, no matter how long we're here for life is constant and complicated at times. I've continued drastically in the last couple of years and I'm still changing and that's okay. The Water Under the Bridge singer said she focused to, she plans to focus on herself and enjoy life over the next year. Adele says 31 is going to be a big old year, and I'm going to spend it all on myself. The first time in a decade, I'm ready to, um, to feel the world around me. 
and look up for once. She advised, be kind to yourself. People were only human. Go slow. Put your phone down and laugh out loud at every opportunity. Learn to really, truly love yourself. And I've only just realized that there's more enough than, than enough. I've learned to love you a lot even, eventually. Adele appears to tease new music to come. The singer's previous albums 19, 21, and 25 have been named after significant years in her life. She wrote, adding a heart emoji, bunch of savages, dirty will be a drum and bass record to spite you, chin up. Adele confirmed her separation from Kaneki in April after two years of marriage. This pair also are parents to six-year-old son Angelo. Adele's rep says they are committed to raising their son together lovingly as, as um, we take, uh, they ask for privacy. There will be no further comment. But that has announced a new concert series which will feature the pop star giving intimate performances in support of her upcoming 14 studio album, Madam X. Madonna will be performing in a limited amount of cities, including New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Boston, Philadelphia, Miami, London, and Paris. The music icon will be kicking things off on September 12th at the BAM Howard Gilman Opera House in New York, where she will be performing seven times until September 21st. Madonna will then be performing four times at the Chicago Theater in Chicago from October 15th to 21st before performing five times at the Wiltern in Los Angeles from November 12th to the 17th. Tour dates for the additional cities will be announced at a later date. Fans can gain access to tickets by signing up for ticket um, for Ticketmasters. Fans will be asked to select their preference city and and price points and will be notified they'll be notified on May 17th about their ticket sets. Every ticket purchase will include a CD of Madam X, which is set to arrive on June 14th. The album will feed, will include the single Maya Dean featuring Maluma. Madonna released a music video for Maya Dean, which featured herself and the Latin music stars starring a steamy romance. Incubus has announced an, a new North American full tour to celebrate the 20th anniversary of their platinum-selling album, Make Yourself. The band is set to kick off their 20 years of Make Yourself and Beyond tour on September 13th at the Fillmore Auditorium in Denver before wrapping things up on December 7th at the House of Blues in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Incubus will be performing in other cities such as Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, New York, Philadelphia, Boston, Toronto, Detroit, Chicago, Phoenix, Los Angeles, St. Louis, Houston, New Orleans, Nashville, Orlando, and Atlanta, among others. Tickets go on sale for the general public on Friday at 10 a.m. local time through Live Nation. Incubus will be joined by specialist uh, dub trio Wild Bell and Le Butcherettes to, on select dates. <clears throat> Incubus singer Brandon Boyd said in the statement, We're so looking forward to this fall tour. Make yourself with such a pivotal moment in our band. And we're beyond excited to reintroduce this album to our audience while also showcasing the many musical roads it ultimately led us down. See you soon. <clears throat> Make Yourself, released in 1999, was Incubus's third studio album and contained the singles Stellar, Drive, and Pardon Me. Justin Bieber and Ed Sheeran are giving fans a preview of their new single. The 25-year-old Canadian singer and 28-year-old British recording artist posted snippets of the song after teasing the collaboration on social media. Bieber shared a clip Monday on Instagram featuring a tropical beat and a line of him saying, We had a party we don't want to be at. The friend singer appeared on uh, to confirm the single's release date on Twitter. He wrote, It's happening, hashtag Friday. Sharon had shared a similar clip of the song Sunday on Instagram stories. He said before the preview cut short, Hey guys, I've got some new music coming out. I just want to play you the song and see if you like it. We were po uh, previously posted the number 7 Friday on Instagram, seven days before the song's release date on May 10th. Sharon appeared to respond with the song's title in the comments. Sharon said, uh, wrote, I don't care. Bieber and Sharon previously collaborated on the songs Love Yourself and 
Cold Water, which Sharon co-wrote. Bieber last released a single Friends in August 2017, while Sharon released the album Divide in May 2017. Bieber is working on a secret project with YouTube. The project is slated for release in 2020. And that is your entertainment report for Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. I'm your host, Mr. Dan Tamray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the answer report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the entertainment report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.